I don't think they're gaining strength. What is true is, is that from the start, our goal has been first to contain, and we have contained them. We have not contained ISIL. Have territory. they been contained at any time since 2010? Uh, it, it, tactically, uh, in areas they have been, uh, strategically they have spread since 2010. We've got to choke them off. We have to choke off how they make money. We've got to choke off their ability to bring in new fighters. Well, the president today in Paris, uh, wrapping up that climate change conference, also talking about the fight against ISIS. We'll talk a little bit more about the plan in Syria as this administration sees it. Up on Capitol Hill, the defense secretary today saying there is a plan to put more troops in both Iraq and Syria. In full coordination with the government of Iraq, we're deploying a specialized expeditionary targeting force to assist Iraqi and Kurdish Peshmerga forces and put more, even more pressure on ISIL. These special operators will over time be able to conduct raids, free hostages, gather intelligence, and capture ISIL leaders. This force will also be in a position to conduct unilateral operations in Syria. Chairman of the House Armed Services Committee looking on there, Mac Thornberry, and this in addition to the 50 special ops forces heading into northern Syria. Let's bring in our panel, Steve Hayes, senior writer for the Weekly Standard, A.B. Stoddard, associate editor of The Hill, and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Steve. Well, it was very interesting listening to Secretary of Defense Ash Carter today take a much more aggressive line, rhetorical line, I think, with respect to the problem on ISIL. And you saw uh, Dunford say, in effect, they were never contained. There seems to be two different messages coming out of the administration. On the one hand, you've got the military and folks at the Pentagon who are saying, we're taking this seriously. We want to lead on this. Uh, Ash Carter just made remarks at Harvard in which he said the United States will lead this coalition and we will defeat ISIS. That's something that we really haven't heard from the President of the United States. At the same time, you have John Kerry saying, well, we might be able to win if we get our act together, which was reminiscent of the President's comments from June in which he said, well, we don't quite have a, a strategy for ISIS yet, and I think consistent with what we've seen from the President with respect to climate change, where the President seems to be much more enthusiastic and engaged in talking about climate change and describing that problem in, in very apocalyptic terms but not doing the same thing uh, on ISIS. So you're getting these two different messages coming from the administration. I think the steps that we heard from the Pentagon were first steps. They were positive. There are lots of details uh, that we need to hear uh, more about. But it's still inconsistent with what we're hearing from the White House. And we've seen over the past seven years that nothing matters more than what the White House says and does. Yeah, A.B.? Well, I thought that it was heartening that um, the Secretary of Defense uh, wanted to be specific about the kind of operations that require a ground presence, that we have not been able to target, we've not been able to do certain things on the ground without a ground presence that's now going to work in conjunction in Iraq with Iraqi forces and Peshmerga also going to, to be unilaterally operating in Syria. It was an admission that we couldn't effectively target. We didn't have the intelligence to back up the strikes. And so our air campaign was ineffective. It is a stark admission. And he then was intentionally vague about how this will expand. And he basically said it's open-ended. And that act, that is a big change because they, what they've wanted to do so far is say, we're going to do this, we're gonna, it's going to work, and it's going to be really tight and restricted. It's going to be 50 people. It's going to be this and that. They really, for the first time, w were intentionally vague and open-ended. And I think that's a recognition that what they've done hasn't worked and they need to try something different and something larger. Also saying uh, today that it's kind of just the beginning of what's possible as far as deployment. I want to play President Obama asked about uh, the Russians and specifically Vladimir Putin and what uh, those airstrikes are doing inside Syria, if that will change. On, on Mr. Putin, I, I don't expect that there, you're going to see a 180 turn on their strategy uh, over the next several weeks. So I don't think we should be any under illusions that somehow uh, Russia starts hitting only ISIL targets. Uh, that's not happening now. It was never happening. It's not going to be happening in the next several weeks. So there. But he does say that eventually uh, Putin will come to his senses and understand that, as Obama has been saying, Obama understands the Russian national interest and Putin doesn't. And when the Enlightenment arrives, Putin will ultimately change his position and join us. I mean, for a guy who doesn't understand the American national interest, that's a remarkable statement. 
But then he, he actually added something and said, with the memory of Afghanistan fresh in his mind, Putin will understand, he's in a quagmire. The Russians left Afghanistan 25 years ago. The people stuck in the quagmire today are Americans under Obama. He's been in office seven years. 76% of the combat deaths of Americans in Afghanistan has occurred under Obama, and there is little doubt that our position in Afghanistan today is weaker than it was seven years ago when he came into office. So when he's trying to instruct Putin on national interests and on quagmires, he's on rather thin the ground. And just one point about the, the testimony today. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs was asked whether he, he considered the drivers of the oil trucks by ISIS, the ones who exported, as combatants. And he said, no, they're civilians trying to feed their families. And that's why we actually dropped leaflets warning the drivers three quarters of an hour before any airstrike. This is a joke, and it comes not from the Pentagon. It comes from the White House. This has not been a serious air war, and all the promises that, oh yes, now we're going to get serious, I think are a joke, as long as this president is commander-in-chief. You know, the administration continues to say that Russia is in a quagmire, and, and this will eventually perpetuate this political solution in Syria. But now we get word that Russia is increasing its, its force on the ground. It has added another air base inside Syria. Um, do you think that this is going to force a political solution somehow? No, I don't. And, and we've seen the president project his views onto Vladimir Putin now going on several years. I mean, he certainly did it with respect to, to Ukraine. I think that's what's happening here. But, but if you look at what the president said there about Putin, it's really remarkable that he wasn't bolder in his criticism of Putin. It's not just that Vladimir Putin and Russia aren't going to change their strategy to bring it in line with U.S. interests. It's that they've been bombing U.S.-backed groups in Syria. You would think that might occasion some outrage on the President of the United States. But, Even after. But he's in such a box. The President's in such a box that he can't do this. And I think where this is all heading is likely U.S. cooperation with Russia. I believe that that's happening tactically on the ground right now to a much greater extent than people in Washington understand. I expect that we'll see them give up the pretense and basically own it in the next several weeks. Even after a Russian airliner was brought down allegedly by ISIS. I want to play one more sound, but this is Hillary Clinton this morning on CBS uh, about troops in Syria. I agree with the president's point that we're not putting American combat troops back into Syria or Iraq. We are not going to do that. This Under fight, no circumstances well, would you not do that? Well, at, the, at this point, I cannot conceive of any circumstances where I would agree to do that. We don't know yet how many special forces might be needed, how many trainers um, and uh, surveillance and uh, enablers might be needed. But in terms of thousands of combat troops, like some on the Republican right. side are recommending. I think that should be a non-starter. It may be good politics, A.B., but it's an interesting decision in a time of um, uncertainty. For Hillary Clinton, with her entire record, it really is startling to hear her say so close after the attacks in Paris, which could easily happen here and in anticipated that some form of an attack like that would happen here sooner um, rather than later. For her to say that she can't conceive, later on she said thousands like the Republicans are talking about, but she said she couldn't conceive of a situation where we put ground troops over, but we are. That's what we're doing right now. We're, 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 expand, we're starting and then expanding a ground presence because we realize that the air campaign is ineffective. This is, that was a carefully constructed answer with Clintonian language, which will leave her if she is the president to actually act if she needs to. And I think she's the kind of person who is not that ideologically committed the way Obama is and the way Sanders is. I think she's a lot more flexible, but she says whatever she needs to say politically, and that's what she's doing. Next up, Republicans going after each other in the presidential race. The countdown to Iowa is on.